gentleman knows full well that I think you have wasted a lot of time on this House floor, uh, uh, wasted a lot of effort uh, on this House floor, knowing full well that that had no chance of passage and that you were simply appealing to the base uh, that you were just appealing to. In fact, uh, this gentleman believes that what you would do if your bills passed, you would take away benefits from millions and millions and millions of people. And I think that's incontestable. It's incontestable that uh, seniors who are now getting more help, the donut hole for their prescription drugs, which enhance their quality and length of life, uh, would lose it uh, if we repealed the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it is incontrovertible, I will tell my friend, that millions of young people who can't find a job, unfortunately, in this economy, and we haven't gotten any immediate jobs legislation that was offered by the president on this floor to even consider pass or fail, uh, millions of young people would lose their insurance. Millions of children who have a pre-existing condition, who now under the Affordable Care Act cannot be precluded by the insurance companies, was really uh, who you want to put in, not you personally, but uh, who the uh, defeat of the Affordable Care Act would put insurance companies back in charge. Not my way or the highway. That's what you just said, Mr. Leader. Uh, I understand that concept. Uh, very frankly, in my view, we have agreement. We have agreement on something that you won't bring to the floor, and it is that all middle-class working Americans will not get a tax hike, all of them. And everybody up to $250,000 of income will have no tax increase. Yes, we have disagreement, but you're prepared to hold hostage working Americans by saying if the richest people in America might have a little bit of a tax increase, then the, everybody else is going to get a tax increase. You said it a different way. I understand it. But the, but the reality and the ramifications of the actions that you are proposing to follow will mean that we will not get a vote, which I think there's overwhelming support of, in making sure that working Americans and, yes, small, 97 percent of small businesses don't get any tax increase at all. We have agreement on that, Mr. Leader. Why don't we bring that to the floor and show the American public that, yes, we can come together, as you have suggested, yes, we can agree, and yes, we can make sure they don't get uh, a tax increase. And then, yes, we can have a debate on the balance, and you will take one position, they take another position, and the American public will see that, and then they can make a judgment on uh, uh, with whom they agree. Now, uh, my view is, uh, an overwhelming majority of the public uh, will agree with me, and you will think the overwhelming majority of the American public will agree with you. That's what democracy is about. Let us have this debate. Let us have this vote. Let us make sure that working Americans aren't held hostage uh, to the wealthiest in, in our country. I yield. But what you will, are proposing to do, Mr. Leader, is to bring to the floor a bill which simply protects the 2 percent. Say the 2 percent, they should not pay more. And the gentleman says, Oh, they're great job creators. I and I will tell the gentleman with all clarity that the consequences of your act, and you do it knowledgeably, will be that middle class taxpayers will be put at risk. Why? Whether you agree with it or not, the president will veto it. The Senate, I don't think, will pass it. And the fact of the matter is, we can do for 98 percent of America, that which we agree on. You don't want them to have a tax increase? I don't want them to have a tax increase. We agree on that. And Americans cannot understand, cannot understand, when we agree on that, why we can't at least pass something on which we agree, which will help 98 percent of America.